the road to Chelsea Westminster Hospital. You're probably stopped. You don't move the blue lights. You're not even moving for people who work there and trying to get there. Alright guys, so we got to talk about the woke climate extremists once again because they just can't stop pissing people off. No, literally, they just can't stop pissing people off. So much so that there's a new group of anti-just-stop-oil protesters who have decided to surround just-stop-oil protesters in order to prevent them from blocking traffic. And the name of these uh anti just stop oil protesters is just stop pissing people off no I i'm not making this up this is actually a real thing take a look my name's peter i'm 29 years old and yesterday i was arrested peacefully protesting on the road but i'm back out here today because it is our democracy right to do so and we know that disruption is uncomfortable but it's necessary and we meet this circle of people around us and we do agree about the same things except that we have that sense of urgency that when you see that a house is on fire you're not going to ask permission to the people inside to call the fire the fire rescue you're just going to do it and that's what just the board does we're ringing the alarm bell and yes getting on the road is scary but again it is necessary and we do this out of love and we also do it out of desperation because this government does not have our best interests at heart quite the opposite it is determined to go through with over a hundred new fossil fuel licenses and that's our future that's everyone's future yours as well as ours and the people have children too and you know it's it's not just my generation it's every single pe person here and the people in the global south as well yeah, so as you can see there, clearly radicalized and brainwashed individuals. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, okay? Uh, but I want you guys to notice there, again, you have people surrounding them, uh, preventing them from blocking traffic. And they have shirts on that say, just stop pissing everyone off, right? Because that's what's happening. Everybody's getting pissed off because when you block traffic, uh, you're blocking people from getting to very important events, or getting to their job, or for example, if there is an emergency, like for example, you need to go to the hospital, you need to take somebody to the hospital, um, potentially you could be harming people and you could potentially be costing people their lives, okay? And that brings me to this next clip that I wanna show you guys that is going viral of a mother confronting uh, one of these Just Stop Oil protesters, these climate extremists, uh, because they are blocking her from taking her baby to the hospital okay she's on the way to take her baby to the hospital allegedly according to her in, in the video that's what it sounds like she's saying and uh they don't want to move out the way okay they're standing there like zombies okay and they don't have any sympathy at all for what this mother uh is going through and what she has to do in regards to taking care of her baby and it really is um you know kind of disheartening to see uh, this type of footage go viral on the internet because again if police were doing their jobs over there in the UK uh, This wouldn't be happening at all. Take a look Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, so here you have these clowns that are being told that, look, uh, this woman has a baby. I believe they said a newborn baby, and she's going to the hospital. She's trying to get to the hospital, okay? Now, regardless of whether or not, you know, that's actually true, I don't know, but I'm assuming that it's true. Um, these people, instead of having a heart, okay, claiming that they're trying to save humanity, right? Uh, they just continue to walk in the same direction very slowly, blocking traffic like zombies okay they literally look like mindless zombies continuing to block traffic instead of getting the hell out the way and letting people go about their day right now again you know hey allegedly police in the uk have you know arrested these people some of these people have been jailed for years okay but it seems like you know they're not doing enough okay because if they were doing enough uh none of these people would be doing this okay uh, it just wouldn't be happening. So I think that the UK and their police need to do even more. They need to have harsher penalties for people who do stuff like this. Uh, it, it should be to the point where, again, if you get caught doing this on video, in person, whatever, uh, you're going to spend at least a few years in prison. I'm so serious, right? I'm so serious. Prisons should be filled up with climate uh, change extremists who block traffic, okay, who pull these types of stunts, right? They should be filled up with them because that's the only way that you can deal with radical extremists, right? You have to lock them up, okay? These people are radicalized, okay? And the reason why they're radicalized is because you have far-left liberals, okay, and progressives and the mainstream liberal media uh, radicalizing individuals by basically complaining about the planet uh, being too hot because the sun is too hot, apparently. Which, you know, by the way, every single year, okay, uh, the planet gets too hot around summertime. Again, this is why we call it summer, right? These long stretches of extreme heat are what they see as cause for alarm. That extreme heat is not just being felt here in the United States. It's being felt by millions of people all around the world as the heat wave sweeps across parts of Europe and Asia, too. One top climate group warns that, quote, heat hell is worldwide at the moment and that those extreme temperatures are nothing short of dangerous. Bill Weir, we don't usually see these record breaking temperatures that we usually until later in the summer. Why is this summer expected to be hotter than last summer? cooling patterns in the Pacific there, which actually hid a lot of the pent up energy in the oceans, which have been hiding a lot of the heat for the last century or so. Right now, every second of every day, uh, our planet absorbs as much extra heat as 10 Hiroshima sized atomic bombs per second. And now we're seeing the full result of that. Now we have wildfire smoke, which is a result of drier forests up in Canada and easier burning uh, conditions there. We have those devastating flash floods that took the lives of those children, uh, as you were describing, north of Philadelphia. Those are the results. But heat is really the engine of all of this. A warmer planet holds too much water in some places, not enough in others. And the rate that it's going up now, as scientists are used to seeing sort of ocean temperature records broken by a half a degree. It's been shattered by five degrees in the North Atlantic. Yeah, so it's summertime, right? Uh, that's essentially what they're saying, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, every summer there is, you know, cause for concern because every summer it gets hot, <laughs> right? At least in the northern hemisphere of the planet, that is, okay? It gets hot. It gets real hot. Okay, I mean, this is what we deal with every year. So like I said, these people are literally pissing everybody off, right? Including the people that are funding them, right? Or that were funding them, okay? As we have an article here about a wealthy U.S. entrepreneur bankrolling Just Stop Oil sensationally turns on unproductive climate mob and says, quote, pink-haired, tattooed, and pierced protesters stopping kids getting to school are not accomplishing anything anything right so again we're going to talk a little bit about who's actually funding these people okay and the fact that at least some of the people that used to fund these people are turning on these radicals because they aren't doing anything right they're just pissing people off okay they're doing nothing but pissing people off so let's read here 
The American entrepreneur who funded Just Stop Oil has slammed the activism as performative and claimed the group is alienating those it could be winning over. Trevor Nelson co-founded the Climate Emergency Fund, a group that bankrolled Extinction Rebellion and JSO, but has since resigned his position and described their methods as, quote, unproductive. The 50-year-old Californian businessman stepped down in 2021, but has since decided to speak out to criticize the group's protest tactics, which include slow marches and blocking roads. Major events have been disrupted by GSO, including the Rugby Cup final at uh, Twickenham and the Epson Derby with Wiblon uh, suspected to be the next sporting event under threat. I believe they actually did protest at that, okay? Quote, it's become disruptive for the sake of disruption, Nielsen told the Times. Working people uh, that are trying to get to their job, get their kid dropped off at school, survive a brutal cost of living crisis in the UK. You know, there's a certain hierarchy of needs that they have. Facts. Again, you should have realized this when you were uh, bankrolling these people. So I'm not necessarily giving this guy praise for coming out here and denouncing these people because he helped radicalize them. He funded the radicalization, right? He funded these activities that have disrupted people's lives. So again, this guy doesn't get credit, okay? In fact, uh, he should probably turn himself in and go to jail, right? And do some time for funding this type of extremism. Uh, Nielsen was once an enthusiastic supporter of the controversial tactics employed by the climate groups, but said that their activities have caused him in increasing unease. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it does. Uh, quote, if at the same time they have a pink hair tattooed and peers protesters standing in front of their car so that their kid is late for their test that day, that does not encourage them to join the movement. He told the Times, quote, it's just performative. It's not accomplishing anything. I absolutely believe that it has now become counterproductive. And I just feel like that uh, has to be said by somebody that was involved in the beginning of what it has become. Yeah, so you funded the monster, right? You funded the monster, okay? And now he has regrets because, again, he sees that, yeah, they're not accomplishing anything. They're just making people's lives worse. So with that being said, here's what I got to say about this. You know, it's funny because big tech, right? We've talked about censorship. Right. And uh, if you just so happen to not agree with the climate agenda. Right. You could be punished by big, big tech. OK, uh, because apparently that's harmful, even though I'm not sure how disagreeing with the climate agenda has caused any real world harm to anybody. Right. But but if you disagree with the climate agenda, uh, you could face punishment from big tech. Right. They might not allow it on their platforms. However, if you go into the other direction in regards to extremism, where you come out here and you claim that the world is going to end in 12 years because of climate change and that we're living in a heat hell, OK, that the planet is going to get destroyed. If you make these radical claims that have no real basis in reality in regards to the world ending, that is OK, um, then big tech decides to do nothing about it right they don't do anything about it you don't get punished even though this type of rhetoric is actually causing real world harm right it is causing real world destruction and chaos but yet big tech doesn't feel the need to censor those people right but again if you say something in the opposite direction that they consider to be extreme in regards to climate you could be punished for it because it is harmful Again, it's just amazing how that works. The double standard that big tech has in regards to censorship and what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say in the name of uh, trying to prevent real world harm. But again, they don't seem to be doing anything about people that are actively being radicalized by this radical rhetoric from the left. Again, this is not just the climate stuff when it comes to race, when it comes to gender. Uh, we see real world violence and harm being done by radical extremists who've been brainwashed by radical rhetoric coming from the left and big tech doesn't want to do anything about it. Right. But they're so focused on so-called right wing extremism and right wing conspiracies that are supposed to be harmful. But they don't really care about the real world harm that's being done from left wing conspiracies. Right. Again, this is just another example of the double standards and how big tech clearly, clearly uh, is in support of a lot of this radical extremism from the left because they allow it. Right. They're not as focused on that as they're they're focused on other things that disagree with the narrative. It's just amazing how that works.
Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.